Like any other human language, computer language, Python included, has a mechanism to identify various elements in the program by identifiers of your choice. Of course, each element has a prescribed set of rules to form an identifier. We will find out how to form identifiers in Python. One of the identifiers is a keyword. The keywords is a set of predefined identifiers with a specific purpose. The programmer writes the programming logic using these keywords. Which are different keywords in Python? We will come to know about them one by one as we proceed. The language also defines the usage of its keywords. Each instruction in Python is a statement following the prescribed syntax. Often the program contains certain text which is not exactly a statement in the language but a note or a comment for understanding. How and why a comment is put in the Python program that we will see in this topic. Finally, indent is an important aspect in Python program. What is an indent? How it is used? That is the last point in this topic. So we start with an identifier. Any element in the program is given a suitable name so that it can be conveniently used throughout the program. In addition to the keywords which are predefined and all in lower case, other elements in the program are variables, objects, functions, classes, etc. How do you coin a name to any user defined identifier? The first rule is that it should start with an alphabet or an underscore. Rest of the characters can be alphabet, digit or an underscore. An alphabet's case is not exchangeable. That is, identifiers are case sensitive. Age with capital A is not same as age with small a. If the name starts with a single underscore, the convention indicates that it is a private variable and if it starts with a double underscore, it is a protected variable. At this juncture, don't worry about what is a private and protected. You will learn about these, these terms in later topic. Python uses identifiers with leading as well as trailing double scores for a special purpose. That also will come up later. For now, just look at these examples. As mentioned earlier, keywords are predefined identifiers. Programmer is required to make use of these keywords as per the prescribed rules of syntax to construct the programming logic. There are 35 keywords in Python as of now. It is possible to find out how many keywords are there in Python. In front of the Python prompt, in an interactive console, first import the keyword module. Import is also a keyword. What does it stand for? We shall come to know later. And then type keyword.kwlist. List of all keywords is displayed. Another way is to use Python shells help system. Just type help keywords and then the list of keywords will be displayed. Further, you can obtain help about a certain keyword. How? Put it in the parenthesis in front of the help. The help regarding that keyword will be displayed. What is a statement in Python? Any text terminated by a new line character or enter key is treated as a statement by the interpreter and it tries to execute it. If it is not according to the syntax, appropriate error message will be displayed. Normally a single statement can be entered in one line. However, if it is required to spill over the next line, use the backslash as continuing character. Here a string is split over three lines joined by backslashes. 
Note that backslash is not necessary. If the items in a collection such as a list or tuple are over more than one lines. To accommodate more than one statements in the same physical line, use a semicolon to tell the interpreter that these are the two different statements. Now the comment. Any text in the script or program not considered by the interpreter while executing the program is a comment. Whenever the interpreter encounters a hash symbol, everything in that line that is up to the new line or an enter is treated as a comment. It may be in the beginning of the line that is the first column in which case the entire line is a comment. It may be in the middle of the line in which case the remainder of the line is treated as a comment. A comment acts as an explanatory note or remark to let the other collaborators in the team as well as the programmer himself know or recollect about the program's purpose, logic or the description of the identifiers etc. It's an important documentation tool. Writing comments in the program is considered to be a good programming practice. To mark more than one successive lines in a program as a comment, each line should start with a hash symbol. Text over multiple lines between triple inverted commas is also treated as a comment if it is not a doc string of a function or a class. At this juncture, don't worry about the term doc string. We will come to know about it later. Now the, the use of indents is a unique feature of Python. Indent is a white space on the left. It is similar to a fixed space that you leave at the left to indicate the beginning of a paragraph. Many mainstream languages like C, C++ or Java etc. use the curly brackets to mark a block of statements. More often than not, too many opening and closing curly brackets, sometimes called as braces, make the code difficult to read. Instead of the curly brackets, Python uses the indents to mark the block. Successive statements with a uniformly indent, indented block is treated as a block. This makes the program look clean and you can visually make out the blocks. In most of the Python IDEs, the next line after a colon symbol starts an indented line. Default indentation level is four columns. That is starting column position of the new line will advance by four columns to the left than the previous line. Multiple statements in an indented block appear in conditional and looping constructs and the definitions of a function, a class, etc. Here we can see indented blocks of the if and else, the for loop and the definition of a function.